Yes, man, number one station in the streets. It's Streets 945. I am Fly Guy DC, Mr. 6 to 10, the GOAT, GOAT, GOATY. And listen, I have a special guest in the building. Uh, I must say she came highly, highly recommended. Uh, the people who introduced me to her and the, the people who have been talking to me about her, uh, I respect their opinion and value their opinion so much in this industry which uh, has made this amazing connection. And it's only right I allow you to introduce yourself to the city of Atlanta and to the world. Oh, thank you so much. My name is Moxie. I'm really happy to be here. Well, listen, it is a blessing for you to be here. We're honored to have you here. Now, I just hope you're prepared. I hope you got enough of a time. Like, it's an <laughs> interview, but, like, it's going to be like a conversation. I'm telling you, like, okay. so thorough, so straightforward, and we're going to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Now, for all for the people that don't know who Moxie is... Give us a little background about Moxie, your upbringing, where you're from, and everything of that nature. So I'm from New Jersey. I moved to New York when I was 13 to go to performing arts school. I lived with my sister. And I really, like, have been doing this my whole life. There's nothing like a waking memory that I have of where I didn't know I wanted to be a singer. So um, just been focusing on that. And then I went to school. I studied jazz. Then I got my first record deal, moved out to California um, right after college. And uh, with with capital, and then I've had a whole journey in the music industry. But I've gotten here, where now I have like creative control over everything I'm doing in life. Now, where is Moxie your real name? No, my real name is Laura. Laura? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did Moxie come from? Moxie was a nickname given to me by a really close friend. Actually, when I first moved to LA, I was living with eight guys in a house. And wait, 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 wait. You were living with eight guys. Eight. Were you the only girl? Yes. What made it was a whole production company we had in New York. Oh, we it was a production working, company. Okay. And then we were all like, let's see if we can go out to LA and like make make stuff happen. So we went out. We we were supposed to stay like two weeks, and then we ended up staying like I mean forever, really. But we were in that house for like six months. Now, like now how house. how was that for you? Honestly, a it was three great. bedroom house with eight guys. Were you the I, only I always, female? I always joke about it because like <laughs> I always joke they did whatever I said. <laughs> So we're, I had a lot of control in that house. I'd be like, the kitchen is dirty. We have to clean it. So you were like the mom of the house. <laughs> I, they called me Mama Mox. Okay, okay. I would make everybody sandwiches, and we would make music all day. And, yeah, it was it was actually, like, really, really chill, good vibes. Yeah. Okay, and then mm -hmm. the name? And so um, my friend Eric, he's actually Adele's pianist. Mm -hmm. um, he's, like, a brilliant musician. But we were, like, we were just talking about, like, what my name could be and always throwing out words and stuff. And he started calling me Moxie. He's like, that really fits you because you got a lot of Moxie. Needs to have like a lot of like guts to do stuff, and so it just stuck. I started, I started like introducing myself as that, and then it just stuck. Now, you, as far as like, what's what's your ethnicity? I'm Sicilian. Now, I'm what Italian. is that? Oh, so you're Italian. Yeah, but it's from like a cer uh, like a certain part of Italy, like the south. It's island. It's an island. Yeah, that's like where like the Godfather is from. Yeah, so that's what that so was my Sicilian. next question. So yeah. you're Italian, like, is your family like? <laughs> mob bosses and no but my grandparents who came from italy are from corleone which is like the mafia town that's where like the godfather is from but he wasn't in the mafia he like left italy to escape that corruption so your upbringing mm -hmm. did you see or were you around stuff of that nature no my dad my dad like totally kept us away from that but but I but I have like the full Italian upbringing. Like my dad wakes up at five a.m. every Sunday, makes pasta sauce, super strict, like strict. Like we will work until like our hands bleed. Like that's the that's the kind of like way my dad brought us up. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also I was like I was always like different, and so I was a vegetarian when I was three years old. A vegetarian? How how can you determine to be a vegetarian at three years old? My mom took me, we lived in New Jersey, my mom took me to this, like, turkey farm, petting zoo, like, before Thanksgiving, just to, like, see animals. And she said I just, like, had a fit and was like, I don't understand, we're going to eat this tomorrow. At three? Like, she said I just threw a fit, like, had a panic attack, saw the turkey on the table the next day at Thanksgiving, you know, you'd see, like, the full thing. Mm -hmm. She said I never would eat meat since. And my dad, who's, like, super Italian, would be so upset by this. He'd be like, I make a meatball. She doesn't want to eat. I make Wait, a chicken can you parmesan. Do the, can you do the accent she again? She doesn't want to eat it. I make her I make her spaghetti and clams. She doesn't want to eat it. She wants this tofu shit. <laughs> and he'd be like, Deb, something's wrong with her. She's a hippie. I don't understand it. <laughs> wow. My whole life, to this day, 
my dad will like offer me money as a joke. I'll give you I'll give you five hundred dollars so you can see this fish tonight. If you're ever gonna try it, tonight is the night. He won't give up. And uh, you will never. never. I've never even taken the money. I'm like, no. <laughs> I should take the money. Wow. Now, are you the only child? No, I'm one of four. One of four? Are you the <laughs> oldest, the youngest? I'm in the middle. In the middle? Yeah. So how's your relationship with your siblings? We're really close. It's like one of my biggest blessings in my life is my siblings. We're now, really close. Now, what about the rest of your family? Like, are you very family-oriented? We are. We are very family-oriented. I'm definitely, like, the different one, like, oddball out. Mm -hmm. um, but... Now, why did Eric uh, give you that nickname? Like, what made him start calling you Moxie? Well, Eric always, Eric is, first of all, like, a brilliant genius and always, like, coming up with these words that I've never heard of before. But he, he just thought, like, I had a lot of, like, I just wasn't afraid to, like, go after anything in life. Like, that's just kind of been how I am. Like, I, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 13 to live with my sister and, um, I was living in this house with eight guys, and I was just, like, going. I've just always, like, gone after what I wanted, and so he felt like that name was fitting. So as far as going after what you want, is that in every aspect in life? Um, Pretty much, but I really don't have other, like, focuses other than music. So you have no dating life? <laughs> I, had, I had put focus into dating. I have in the past. It has never been worth it. And why do you say it hasn't been worth it? Um... Okay, I, okay, not not worth it because in some of my relationships I grew a lot and I'm really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like me putting all my focus into my purpose is more fruitful for me right now. And like, I just got out of a relationship like nine months ago. Nine months, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you, do do you have a type? I um, I mean, looks wise, no. Like mm -hmm. every guy I've dated looks completely different, like completely. But I think I go after guys that, like, expand my mind or, like, we offer each other something that we don't each have, you know? Okay. That's, like, more interesting to me. Like, I like I like to, like, meet someone and, like, build an empire with them. I'm not like, oh, let's go on cute dates and, like, chill at home. I'm like, okay, let's fucking go. Like, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on here. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Be yourself 1,000%, okay? But, um. I just want to like build and be like, okay, what business are we starting? What are we doing? What are we, how are we growing? Like what, you know? So in the past, nobody wanted to. No, they do. They have wanted to build. It's like every, I've had three relationships with each one. It's been like that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And how old are you? 28. And when is your birthday? May 12th. So you are a uh... Taurus. And what's the best three things about a Taurus? Loyal, determined. Mm, you're quick on your feet. I like that. <laughs> now, how has, expand on your Italian background, uh -huh. and how has that influenced you as an artist today? Um, I, I love it. Like, it's something that I really value. Um, I'm, I actually, like, really like to cook. So um, we, as a family, like, are always, like, cooking and bringing people together. So we like, like that. That's, like, the kitchen is, like, the main most important part of our house. <laughs> so when did you realize you wanted to pursue a career as an artist? Um, like I said, I don't really have a waking memory of wanting anything else. So it's been since I was little. Like my mom said, one of my first like sentences was just like, I want to sing. That's what I'm doing. And I was just putting on shows like anyone that would listen or watch. So as a kid growing up, who did you listen to often? Or who like were your, your top five as a kid growing up? My dad is is a really really into music like music connoisseur like knows all music facts and everything about like different musicians when albums came out this and that so he would play in the house like really only like Motown and Frank Sinatra mm -hmm. so we would just listen to like Temptations Marvin Gaye Al Green Supremes and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> hmm. And that's like that was like the basis. It was really like Temptations was my dad's favorite, and we always just ha he would leave music on when he left the house. So when you walked in, it was playing. Like he needed music on twenty four seven in the house. And then as I got a little bit older, I like tapped into some more female artists like Jasmine Sullivan and Lauren Hill, and those became like my most influential. So Jasmine Sullivan, yeah. Okay. Now, when you're not in the studio, mm -hmm. what's a typical day like for Moxie? Well, I um. I like 
when I make a pro when I make an album or when I'm in a project, I kind of build a whole world around it. So this project I just put out, 2989, I have a metaverse game that's coming out. So I'm either working on that mm -hmm. or I'm just creating like cool content that's like gives like the music a world to live in. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm working on this project with IMAX right now, um, where people like guests that I invite can come and watch these like 3D renders of the 2989 world and then see this animated video that I created. And my whole project is based off this superhero girl, mm -hmm. if I told you, Carbon. So basically like building out Carbon's world, writing her stories. Like her first tale, like her first story just came out. Well, wait, wait, wait. We're going to get into the music. We're go we're go okay, so if I'm not doing the studio, I'm building that. Uh -huh. I'm building that. Okay. I'm not like, I'm not, I don't chill. Like, my friends are like, you want to hang out? Like, I don't know how to hang out. Like, if I now, hang out, I'm like. Now, do you think here. that, that, because I know, and I've been in the industry for some time now, but I know a lot of people who always had that mindset and they lost the drive for what they wanted to do just because they had no life outside of their mm -hmm. profession. So, like, me personally, mm -hmm. like, I used to think that way. Like, I'm booked almost every single day, mm -hmm. booked everywhere. Mm -hmm. But until I started taking me time, mm -hmm. it made me enjoy it more. Do you For think sure. you would be... Definitely. There are moments where I'm like, okay, I'm not enjoying this right now. I got to take a morning off. Or I got to go do something that I like, hang out with a guy. Like, something that, like, reinvigorates me mm -hmm. a little bit. And so I take those moments. But really, like, what's been making me happy right now is, like, is when I make something and people are like, oh, that touched me. Or, like, I just heard, like, this video I made, they're playing it at, like, a substance abuse um, mm -hmm. rehab facility. Like, that is, like, oh, my God, I have purpose in the world. Like, that feeling is a like, great feeling. Yeah. So what is something that you would like the people to know about you? Like, for everybody listening and watching, it's, like, something that nobody knows or something that you can count on one hand people know or people don't know about you. Like, what is something that you would want – your fans and the people to know about you? Um, it's funny because, like, some people that get close to me, they laugh because they're like, you really, like, look, if you look at my Instagram, it's like, oh, my life, like, it looks, like, I don't know, glamorous. or like Superheroes. Yeah, it's like, oh, like, she's dressed up every day and this and that, and it must be so cool and da-da-da-da-da. And it's like, really, I'm, like, a super nerd. I, like, don't really have much of a life outside of, music and i like if i'm not like this i'm in just sweatpants on my computer like researching nfts or like trying to build things and i i like to work like that's my and, and people who like don't know me and then they get close they're like oh you're totally different than i thought you would be if i look at your instagram so if you could change one thing in your past mm -hmm. what would that be <laughs> i think i focused a lot on like guys in my life mm. not a lot like I've always been focused and driven on my goals but I think I like cared about finding someone to complete me in a lot of ways until I realized like that's never gonna happen and mm. I have to like totally complete myself which is like what I went through after my last relationship and that like got me closer to God honestly and um yeah I think I was looking for that I think I was like looking for that like other half for a lot of my 20s now, speaking of the, the love and romance component, mm -hmm. uh, love language. Yeah. Was that inspired by a relationship? Yeah. Um, it's inspired by people that are always, like, hounding you about something in a relationship. So but, have one of your previous relationships, somebody was always hounding you? Yeah, they were never trusting me. Okay. And I feel like the people that are, like, always like that, like, where are you? What are you doing? Da -da -da -da. Possessive are usually the ones that are doing that. So have you ever thought about it? Do you think that uh, you were, because if a guy, and, and this is me speaking from a guy's point of view, if a guy is, you said, pressing you, mm -hmm. but worrying about your whereabouts, there's some type of insecurity there. And I had right. this conversation with my co-host, my Asia, mm -hmm. uh, literally a couple of weeks ago. So if a guy is insecure and he's pressing you about little things like that that you might not think is that big, did you do your part to help secure his insecurities? Very much. How? Well, that was my issue. I should have just broken up with him because I was like, it wasn't like he had no, re first of all, he had no reason to be insecure. But I was on tour, but, but, so I understood. Wait, wait, you can't say that, though. Look at you. You can't, you can't, 
insecurities come from so many different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to mean what you did or what you've done. Your looks, a guy might not think that he's worthy enough to have you so he can be insecure. Mm. And, And better yet, did you even ask him, was he insecure or figured out what can cure his insecurities? Because your way of curing his insecurities might not be the way that he needed. Facts. That's true. I think I was too young to know, but I I always would be there for him to an extent that would hurt me. Like, okay, you want to, like, keep the phone on while I'm just rehearsing for tour? You'll be on FaceTime. I'll fall asleep on the tour bus with you on FaceTime for 12 hours. Anything that you need, I'll do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And that started to interfere with my work life. But what if that was, what if that, even if he wanted that, what if that was not the language that he needed to complete his insecurities? Absolutely. Like, that might not have been what, like, God needed to put him through to become a better person. Uh But that's what I did. I did anything he asked. I was even willing to, like, hurt my own career for him. Oh, see, now you're tripping. That's what I mean. I was tripping. Like, I was was younger. You know, Mm -hmm. this was, like, younger. But... I was on tour with Justin Bieber at the time. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I, w- I was tripping, and then I found out, like, whatever, I don't want it. No, I we got to talk about it. he was cheating on me the whole time. Oh. That's what I'm saying. I feel like the ones that, like, are need you on FaceTime 12 hours a day, it's like, okay, so you put me to sleep, and then you went out. Crazy, I disagree. I, 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 dis- I disagree with that though, and, and and I can't speak for other guys. Uh-huh. But I'm not a 12 hour a day type of Facetime guy. But I do like to talk. Like I, I want to yeah. see because my life is so busy. So there are times I want to just be on the phone and not say nothing, just to be on the phone. Absolutely, I want that connection too. Okay. Trust, like I like companionship a lot. Um, I think after my last relationship, I'm a little like colder because I wanted that companionship really badly and I didn't get it. And then after that. I had to, like, I guess put up, not walls, but put up some, like, Boundaries. change change what I wanted. Because mm-hmm. to want that was too hurtful. So it's safe to say that an opportunity to pursue your ex is dead. Mm, yeah, I'm not pursuing him. Okay, do you ever double back? Um, I haven't. Hmm. But I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I haven't. Have you ever been in love? Have you ever had your heart broke? Yes. How many times? I think I was heartbroken after each relationship. I've had three. Three. I think I was heartbroken each time, but for different reasons, for totally different reasons. So you're a go-getter, yeah. correct? Uh-huh. So in order for you to pursue somebody, if that chance became again mm-hmm. of you looking for something, what qualities must they have? Um, connection to God. Hmm. Like, wanting to, like, walk in God's path and pursue their purpose. And then I think they, they have to, like, want family because I want family. And I think my last relationship, he didn't really value family the way I wanted. And how many kids do you want? Um, a lot. What's a lot? As many as possible. <laughs> so if you had to throw a number off the top of your head. Four. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. So do you believe in marriage first and then kids or? Um, I don't have, like, a, I'm not, I'm not super, like has to be this way or has to be this way i'm pretty open pretty open okay well let's take it to the music career now okay um how would you describe your sound um it's funny um i've never thought about it like this but a friend of me wrote yesterday um moxie what in the britney spears blade runner masterpiece shit is this <laughs> wow and i was like britney spears like i've never heard that before but I think she was talking about that song Toxic. Mm-hmm. Um, she mentioned that. Just it's like it's futuristic, but it's soulful and um and it's empowering. Now what made you start writing your own music? Uh I started really young. Really young. Um in second grade we en- I ended up moving to a new house with my family and the people that lived there before left the piano. They just left it in the move and I became like obsessed and that's when I started writing songs. I started a band in like third, fourth grade. Um, and I was like, I was so mean to everyone. I was so serious. I'd be like, we have a schedule. We have to do photo shoots. The songs are not turned in on time. And like, I'd make my little brother be in it. And make, like, but like all my friends were like, this is just supposed to be fun. And I'm like, no, this is serious business. Like we have, I made them do a photo shoot in the middle of the snow one time. I was like, we cannot cancel it. We have to do the shoot. So have you, and, and, and just to double back a little bit, mm-hmm. that sounds controlling. 
So have you been controlling in your relationship? Because everything you're saying since the interview has started, if I'm not mistaken, has just been sounding very like, okay, I'm dominant. Let me lead the way. Are you a female that know how to allow a man to lead? I'm I'm pretty submissive in my relationship. Okay. I That's what I like. I like a guy that can, like, see me in my life like this where I'm pretty dominant and then just kind of, like, But do that. you allow them to lead? Yes. Okay. Now, you used to be a professional yeah. dancer, <laughs> yeah. correct? Mm-hmm. Now, how- I mean, I don't allow them to lead. I let us both lead. I don't need, like, a man. See? But I, but I can see, 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 see. You see. think a man has to lead? No, a man doesn't have to lead. But in any situation, any relationship, any commitment that someone is in, how the world sees it, the man is supposed to lead. The female is 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 supposed to allow their man to lead and assist. But if your I mindset have, I is think, already, I think men follow women. You think men follow women? Mm-hmm. And what do you mean by that? Like, like my mentor has told me, like, okay, you want him to eat healthier and because you care about him, you eat healthier and only have that stuff in your house. Yeah, but see, stuff of that nature, out like like that, yes, we will follow completely 1,000%. That's what I mean. yeah. But outside of those type of things, like, I mean, society in general, mm-hmm. like 99.9999% of females or the world thinks men should eat. Do 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 you agree? Do you agree? Do everybody in here agree? Do y'all agree? Okay, so if a if a man should lead and you're not a female, because I ran into this situation in my last relationship. Mm-hmm. She was so independent and so dominant mm-hmm. and so stuck in her ways that it drove a wedge between us because she didn't allow me to lead. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I if I would like need a man to So do you think that's why you're single? But but no, no, because I'm very open to, like, when I get into a relationship, I think there's a purpose. I think there's something he's meant to break down in me, and there's something I'm meant to break down in him. But we both have our own lives and our own purposes. But if if it's like, in my last relationship, there were things that I needed that I had to learn not to need anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, okay by going through that because I felt like it was, like, God purpose. Like, you need to get rid of this this need. You can want things in life, but when you really need them, it's usually something, like, within yourself that you have to heal. So, like, I'm open to that. But I, but I think it's, like, a yin and yang. I don't think it's, like, one leads. I think we're, like, we both come together to, like, mold each other and shape each other and break down shit and, like... No, I highly, I highly 1,000% agree with that aspect. Uh-huh. But if a female, a grown woman, mm-hmm. is dominant and independent and doesn't know how to allow a man to lead, the relationship will never work. Because hmm. a man wouldn't feel like a man if he can't lead. Maybe that's where those insecurities came from. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> that wasn't my last relationship, though. <laughs> but but back to the mm-hmm. to the music. Now, you were a professional mm-hmm. dancer. Mm-hmm. How has that impacted you as an artist? Um, a lot, because I'm always thinking about how I can perform the music and mm-hmm. like, how dancers are going to feel the music. So, yeah. Now, are you independent now? Yes. Yeah, I have distribution only. Okay, now you were previously signed to Capital Capital and Def Jam. Jam. Yeah. How was those situations? Because Capital is humongous, Def Jam is humongous, but now, like, you're you're independent with distribution. Like, how were those two situations, and why are you in the route that you're in now? They were really good. Um, The first one, they wanted me to do more, like, EDM. Mm. stuff and I was always like making more soulful music so it we it worked out I did like a really cool song with Steve Aoki who I'm actually performing with this weekend in Miami we stayed close um that's dope but yeah congratulations what at what's what's Miami ultra yeah yeah, yeah. I, I just left Miami okay oh, cool. um and then with Def Jam I was signed through my manager who was Justin Bieber's manager mm-hmm. Scooter Braun mm-hmm. and so when um I parted ways with him I left the deal and then the, the person that signed me to Def Jam also left, and so it just it like made more sense for me to to leave. Now, is there? Would you go back to a major or? Yeah, I would. 
I would. It just has to be the right situation. And I wanted, like, every time I've been in a major situation, it's been, like, other people controlling what kind of music I'm going to make. Mm-hmm. And so this is the first time where I'm really, really proud of what I'm making because it's, like, came from me more than anybody else. And it's just me leading with my team. So that's been, like, something I'm really proud of. And, like, it, it shows when I perform because I really feel it. Mm-hmm. I actually feel it. It's like I'm, I'm happy to, like, to promote it and play it a million times because I'm proud of it. You know? Now, who has been your biggest motivator throughout your whole career? Like, if that's a family, if that's a friend, if it's somebody who mentors you, if it's somebody who you look up to, like, who has motivated you the most to to remain in this form that you're in, this this superhero, this this power trip, this dominant female? I haven't always been. Oh. Um, especially in my last two, like, label situations. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, I wasn't like that. Carbon was born from being through that and never speaking up and never speaking up. And then one day being like, if this is my life. If I don't do what I actually want to do and create what I actually want to create, I'm, like, not living my purpose. So that's how Carbon came about, and that's how the superhero came about. Okay, cool. Well, look, man, don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. Fly Guy DC, Monty, it's Screech. Yes, man, number one station in the streets. It's Screech 945. I am Fly Guy DC, Mr. 6 to 10, and I'm sitting right here with the uh, wonderful... The gorgeous Miss Moxie. What's up? Listen, man, we are gonna get right back into it. Appreciate you, Sable. But uh, what was your experience like going on tour with Justin Bieber? Cause a lot of people don't get that opportunity. Like, that's yeah. an amazing opportunity. Mm-hmm. It was like a uh, tour one hundred and one. Like I was thrown into it. I only found out like six days before that I was going. They were like, "Do you want to do a few shows opening for Justin?" And then. They call back like an hour later and they're like, do you want to do the whole tour for Justin in seven months? Can you leave in five days and be ready? And so I, I didn't even have time to get a band together. I didn't even have a DJ. Like I would go on stage every night by myself. Um, so it was just like a lot of learning and like just being thrown into it. Now, what's your dream tour experience? Like if you could put together a tour right now from past or present, alive or deceased, oh talent who would be on your dream tour and who's i mean of course you're going to headline on your dream tour okay so i'm headlining you're headlining who else would be on that lineup if you had five options to pick Uh, i love doja cat wow rihanna um i mean i can't headline for beyonce beyonce would headline (laughs) (laughs) um i love her uh, Rosalia. Oh wow! Just like a bunch of like dope girls. So it would be an all female. I think that would be cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, extremely dope. I, I mean, I have like a ton of male artists that I love, but I just think about the tour. Okay, now who has been or what has been your favorite artist collaboration so far? Because mm. I know you're sitting on some stuff over there. I mean, you got Capital, you got Def Jam. Justin Bieber tour. Yeah. I, I, you sitting on some stuff. I know you are. Three come to mind. Um, I did a song with Post when I was on tour with Justin. Ooh. It was me, Post, and Justin on a tour. Mm-hmm. Um, so one night in San Francisco, Post and I got into the studio. I loved like watching him work. He he's so music obsessed. That was like one of the most refreshing things about him. Just like he's constantly playing music, playing me records. Did you hear this record? Did you ever hear this? Da, 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 da. We got in the studio. It was, like, just really fun, good vibes. Um, I worked with Wyclef on my first Wow. Tape. Yeah. I actually got to fly to Sweden because Wyclef heard something of mine, and he was working there with Avicii, and he, like, they flew me there to work for five days, and me and Wyclef did, like, six, seven songs. Kindest person was, like, a father figure to me. Like, wow. Like, incredible experience. Like, I felt like I was just in a movie the whole time. And then um, recently, I actually just did something with Lori, who I know is from Atlanta. Mm. Well, lives in Atlanta. Yeah. And um, I really, like, I love I love working with him. We did we did two records. They were, like, really fire. So okay. So it'll be out soon. Now, are you, like, I know currently, now that you're independent, uh, you said earlier that you basically dictate your sound and what you want to do as an artist. Yes. Is it the same way with the creativity in your videos? Absolutely. Because I kind of get like a, 
a, a Kanye graduation 808 heartbreak vibe from uh, a couple of the videos that I've seen? Like, like, what is the inspiration behind that? Well, first of all, that makes sense because Kanye has been my artistic muse and idol my entire life. Like, he's number one mm -hmm. my whole life. So um, his color schemes and the art he, he's into and the feeling that you get from it, like, that's my biggest inspiration. Um, but, yeah, it's just about creating, like, world building. So it's, like, right now it's all based on, like, Carbon's world and what it feels like in 2099. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever experienced a creative block with you being so creative? Um, I've had moments, yeah, for sure. I have a lot of creative people around me, like a lot of my friends, too. So, like, my, my creative director, Amy, if ever I'm blocked, mm -hmm. I'll call her, and she'll spark some things in me. Um, actually, when I first came up with Carbon and this whole process, I was pretty blocked. I was also homeless, and I had nowhere to go, and I had no money, and I was left Def Jam, and I pretty much had nothing, and I was just feeling like a failure and um that's how this whole carbon thing like kind of was born now what made you feel that you were at that point like outside of the 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 obvious yeah, outside yeah yeah um probably how i felt inside okay definitely didn't have like enough god enough faith like i had always believed in myself that was the thing like since i was young like i moved to new york with my sister when i was 13 i moved out of my parents house i went after everything I wanted. I moved to LA, but like it was at a time where I just felt like, like, nah, it's not gonna happen for you, you know? Now, well, has that been the only time you've been like that no. in your life? No, it happened twice. So what, how do you cope with that? Like, how do you get past that? What do you do particularly? Because there's plenty of people who go through daily life things and of course everybody's uh, coping met methods are different. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to cope when you're feeling at your lowest? So that first time, it's actually a pretty funny story, <laughs> which is like all God and all the universe because I really didn't do much. But so I actually went out with Post Malone um, for, in New York City on New Year's. Mm -hmm. It was like three years ago. And they gave me this like wrapped weed joint thing. And I don't really smoke. Actually, I don't smoke at all. Like, I really don't do anything because that doesn't, like, feel good for me. But I was like, oh, it's January. It was, like, January 6th. It was, like, six days later. I was like, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing going on. I have not. Let me smoke this by myself. And so I smoked it, and I had, like, a huge panic attack. And I called my friend Amy. And I'm like, this is why I never smoke. I feel horrible. And, da, da, da. and she, like, talked me down for, like, an hour. Like, sit in your bed. Let your mind do the thing. It was just like my thoughts were like, T -t -t -t. you know, when they start skipping, mm -hmm. you're like, and I, I hated that. Feeling. Well, I, I don't like, know because I don't smoke, yeah, but so I, I understand. Like, she was like, let it happen and see where it takes you. And I don't know. I had some sort of like psychedelic experience on it. And that's when like I like I think it was like me letting go for the first time in mm -hmm. a really long time. And I I let her talk me into the state where I let go. And like everything of carbon came to me. It was like and it was like her name carbon there's a superhero what she looks like how she talks what she wants in life how she feels on the inside like her world i i went to fedex the next morning i spent like any money that i had and i printed out every single picture that i had found of her on, on like inspo the night before and i made these three huge mood boards that two and a half years later are still in my house of her whole world like everything that she does her pets how she goes to bars, how she interacts with men. Like, I came up with it the whole night that night. So do you mimic? Yeah, I created her, and then I, it was like, it was like I need to be her because I need to be that confident and that in touch with the flow of my life and, like, that fearless and that, that much faith in myself. And, like, I need to be that. And so I had brown hair, dark brown hair. I woke up the next day. I bleached it white. And all I, because of a all because of this vision, but it was like it was like all these things. I was signed to Def Jam. I was signed to Capitol. I was in in performing arts school. It was like all these things were always wanting to come out of me, like all this confidence, all this power, all these things. But I was too meek. I was always meek, and I was always hiding it and swallowing it, and just being like, 
okay, yeah, I'll do whatever their vision is, and I'll da 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 and I'll go with the flow, and I, I won't speak on my visions, and I won't speak on what I want things to look like, and the creativity that I see, and, like, how this video could be so much better if this was lit like this, and it was da 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 and I always had these visions, but I never spoke them, and since that day, it was just like, mm So now you speak your mind. You don't yeah. bite your tongue. Yeah. And then the second time was after my last relationship, and I got really sick. I got COVID, and I was in and out of the hospital for three months. And and that time, the second time that I lost all my faith, I it was because I needed to deepen my relationship with God. And now I feel like more unbreakable because anytime I feel like I lack, I lean on God. Understood. Now, what is the biggest difference from Laura and Moxie? Laura and Moxie? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like Moxie is... Moxie and Carbon are like out here doing shit, going forward, da 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 da. And Laura feels like very much more relaxed. So to pick, to, to, to. Like if I'm at home with my family, I'm in sweatpants, I'm chilling, I'm eating pasta, talking to my niece. That's Laura. Uh huh. Moxie is more like, come on, girls, we gotta take over the world, let's go. <laughs> so which one, who gets seen more in your relationships? Because everything oh, is Laura. reverting. So Laura gets seen more in your relationship. Yeah, after a minute. Like, after the talking phase, they definitely see Laura. Okay, understood. Yeah. Now, do you think you're overlooked as an artist? Um, no. I just think I need to, like, expand. I want to expand my audience. I want to, like, touch more people. Like, I want to serve people with my music. So what can you do more to serve people, Um, in your opinion? That was, like, my intention with creating this whole thing with Carbon was to, like, serve women and, like, be like, okay, this was, I created this at a low point. This got me out of it. Mm-hmm. Go forward. You can do it, too. And let let that experience that I went through, like, you know, empower you. And so that, that's been, like, the whole intention. Like, sometimes I don't even feel like I do this for myself anymore. I literally do it thinking about, like, the girls. That, I mean, I was seeing 20,000 girls a night on the Justin Bieber tour, mm-hmm. and they were me, you know? And I'm like... There, you're me. Like, I see myself. I was that 12-year-old girl at NSYNC concert, mm-hmm. screaming my brains out, like, wanting that, you know? And so it just, like, it was just, like, okay, I do. I think about them. I think about my niece. I think about my little cousins. Now, how did the Magic Girl collection and, and the champion collar come about? So um, I, after the whole carbon thing came to my vision, I ended up, Moving to L.A. and being, like, because uh, I was home with my parents in New Jersey. I couldn't, like, afford rent. I couldn't do anything. I called my engineer, who was, like, now my produ- my executive producer, who just produced this whole EP. And I was, like, um, can I come live on your couch? I need to be in L.A. Like, I need to do this. I need to just go. I'm just going to go. He was, like, okay. <laughs> Shout out to Dan, who's always been there for me. He's been my friend for 12 years. He let me come in, two suitcases in his studio apartment, live on his couch. And I just was there for six months and I just built until I could like get my own place again and I got my own place and I was just like I want the vibes to be so good in here I want to create Carbon's world in here I want to have crystals and I want to like light Palo Santo and I want to have like it wanted to smell good and I want it to be this magic girl place and so I wrote this song called magic girl Mm -hmm. about like waking up in the morning and like lighting a candle and, like, be having, like, the smoke of Palo Santo all around me and, like, my crystals and, like, just manifesting things and, like, just being a magic girl. And so I called this song Magic Girl. And then I had I had a friend that worked at um, Champion, and we just started this collab. Now, let's talk <laughs> metaverse. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the metaverse? Um, I... I'm really into animation mm-hmm. and a 3D animation. Like, it's just, like, it's something that, like, really, like, satisfying to me. So this stuff is exciting to me because I love to create worlds. So when I'm, like, when this metaverse stuff is, like, blowing up, I'm, like, oh, my God, this is perfect for carbon. She can live in the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. And so, like, the new video I just put out is, like, carbon 3D animation. Now, do you have any NFTs? Um, Are you into that? I am. In fact, like, I funded most of this project by buying and selling my mm-hmm. own NFTs. Um, and, like, other people. So, and, like, joining communities. And so, do you have your own? I do. We're, mm-hmm. We, like, did, like, a soft launch um, in December, but I'm really doing, like, the real launch in May. 
but there's a Discord that you can join and. Oh, yeah. you pop and pop. This is this is the NFT actually. I wear it around my neck. It's a glass like we call it a multi pass, and it's like your pass into the uh, 2989 world. Are we getting that? Are we getting that? It says 2989 on it. Uh huh. Um, I gotta get you one. Yes, I need one. I wear yeah. it all the time. I'll I mean, bring it, it to can't you it can't choke me though. Oh no like, no, for men I have a longer chain. Well, can we make mine like like where do you want it? Like 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 right here. Okay. Yeah, not not too long. Okay. Cause but not like I don't want to choke me. I'll bring one tomorrow. If you don't like the chain, I'll get you another one. I like that energy, energy, energy. Yeah. So, what inspires you to keep going after all this time? Because you've been around, you've been in the industry uh, for quite some time now. So, like, what keeps the the formula and the motion and the creativity and the and the inspiration going? Purpose. Like, I really truly feel like this is my purpose. Like, I don't, I don't like want anything. Mm. Yeah, like I don't think I'd be satisfied in my life. Like I just know I have something more to like give and do. Now, what do you want to be in your career? It's 2022. By the end of this year, like what do you want for Moxie? I want to be on another world tour. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's my own or opening for someone, I want my music to touch millions of people. I want them to feel it. I want them to. I want it to like make their lives more fun, better. Let them not feel alone. And what do you want for Laura? Personal. In, in that in that aspect, because Moxie is like inner you got to split you got to split personality. Just that inner peace. Okay, that only inner peace. I just I feel like I ask for so much as Moxie that I don't really care that much about what I what I want as Laura. Like I, at the end of this year, at the end of twenty twenty two, I'm really just focused on Moxie. Like Laura had her time. She was in that relationship. She wanted she wanted hugs. She wanted kisses. She wanted all these things. I don't I don't need any of that right now. I want to just give now. Okay, understood. Now let's mm-hmm. talk current music. Twenty nine eighty nine. Uh dope, you I like must it? say. Dope. Um haven't heard the whole project yet. Let's mm-hmm. do a couple of songs off of it. Um very different. Mm-hmm. Um Um Emotional. Mm-hmm. Why twenty nine eighty nine first and foremost, for the people that don't know? Um it was I wanted something futuristic and I wanted something so far in the future that I had never thought of it before. So like I've thought of like 2030 or 2045 and I was like, I just want to think of like a time that like is so far away that like it doesn't even look like what what we envision as futuristic. What do we see? Like silver buildings and like you flying know, cars, all, all flying and cars and all that stuff. What's after that? Mm-hmm. What's going to look futuristic at that time, when there's flying cars and silver buildings and all this shit, and we're we're there, flying buildings. What's gonna be? What's <laughs> gonna be next? And so that's what I was thinking about. And so, a lot of like the powers that carbon has are like based off of like what I think we can harness as humans, mm-hmm. but we haven't like mental telepathy, and like dolphins use that. Mm-hmm. So it's possible in the natural world, but we don't harness it. And we're told since we're little, it doesn't exist. What if it does? Don't you think there's people levitating in the middle of the woods somewhere? I do. Have you ever levitated? No, but I would love to. (laughs) And, like, I just think there's so much more possibility. So it was, like, a year where I felt like we could be tapping into that by then. By 2989, we can levitate. We use mental telepathy. We can self-heal in a way. Like, our bodies are so self-healing, but we don't, like, we're told, like, just take this pill. Don't try to self-heal this, you know? That's, that's, that's. I mean, you just have me over here speechless. (laughs) Cause nobody, nobody has ever came here in an interview and just had me speechless. Uh, your your wordplay and, and the way you articulate things is, is is very great. Now you have how many alter egos? Well, it's just really carbon. Moxie is like who I present to the world as you know a singer, but it's really carbon is my alter ego. Okay, so you have Laura, you have Moxie, you have carbon. carbon yeah. Are there any more we should expect? Mm, no. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> is, is is there a carbon 2.0? Carbon. Is there a toxic carbon? <laughs> no, no, nah. None of that. I don't know. I don't know. Julian and them have been like trying to bring out my sexy side a little bit more lately. Oh, what? Julian, you still <laughs> hit Julian? I'm not in here. <laughs> Julian. Uh, and what was your take on that? I was like. Yeah, I seen a post that you posted. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie. I seen the post, and I'm like, mind you, we started following each other almost a month and a half ago, uh-huh. 
So I seen the post that you posted. I wanted, I seen it today or yesterday. And I'm like, it was, it was the white. You had the yeah, white. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah, I got a like, call from my mother about Yeah, it. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I, because I'd never seen that because side of you. Because I'm in every day. Yeah, but not even that. Like, even going on your page, like, you don't see that side for real. At so all. when I seen it, it was it threw me off. But what is your take on it? To me, it was fun because I, like, I'm always kind of just, like, in sweats or, like, mm, put together. And so I was just like, mm, that should pop out for a second. Now, you know? do do you think uh, it's not going to be an all the time thing? But you know, so is that another alter ego? What would, what no, would, if, just, if 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 it was if it was <laughs> another alter ego? We like I said, we have Laura, we have Moxie, we have Common Girl. What, what would her name be? Oh my gosh, I don't know. See, I, these names come to me like naturally. when when you're when you're high yeah. and I and, don't. I haven't even smoked since. Since the post Malone blunt. Since that one, I haven't smoked <laughs> since. That was enough for like that was enough for like years. Um, but I don't know. It would just be like my stripper side or something. Okay. Your my stripper side. My boyfriends do that side. Okay. That's what I like. I like to wear like big spaggy sweats every day. Be a boss. Be CEO. Sing. So just what would her name be? If if and if my, because my I'm, man I'm, will see that. So what would her name be? I don't know. Guys, what would her name? Julian, what's the sexy girl that you want to bring out of me? Okay. Lola. So Lola Bunny. <laughs> Lola I have Bunny. A friend named Lola. Bunny. Well, listen, man. Don't go to what I'll tell you down more with Moxie when we come back. Keep it locked in streets. Yes, man. Number one station in the streets. It's Streets 945. I am Fly Guy DC, Mr. 6 to 10. And I'm still in here with Miss Moxie. Or better yet, should I say Carbon? Lola? Or should I say <laughs> Lola? Which one do you like better? Outside of Carbon. I think you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a mad phone call from my mom, like. <laughs> I mean, that, that's how it be. But I mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it was bad. Like, no, it, wasn't it, it too didn't, much. yeah, like it wasn't too much. Like there was a, a huge sex appeal to that. Like it, <laughs> it grabbed my attention, and that's very rare because I, on Instagram, I don't too much. Everybody and their mama posting mm -hmm. any and everything. So, but because, but it was just unfamiliar. Like it was right. something. I'm just like, what? Like People I was just aren't shocked. Used to seeing my skin, so I think. Yeah. yeah. Now, what is your favorite song off of this? So this is an EP. Yes. Now, a question to you that I ask all artists. Like, I know everybody, when they're about to drop, they call it a mixtape, they call it an album, an EP, a project. Like, why is it so hard to dictate and put it as one? Um, I had the intention when to make three musical projects based around this world. So it was mm. two EPs and an album. Mm -hmm. um, to me, when I create an album, it's going to have like more of an in-depth storyline, I felt like, between all the songs. This was kind of like an introduction to Carbon and 2989 and the world. That's why it's called Origin. Mm -hmm. it's called 29 Origin. So it's like it was like the intro. So I felt like it was just an EP. It's just seven songs. It's not like... So the next... It's another EP. It's another EP. Yeah. And then the album. It's called Carbon. So the album is called Carbon. Yeah. And has that already been started? Yes. Is the next EP, is that already done? Almost. Is there a name for the next EP? It's going to be 2989 again, but a different... Different, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I like that. And I I mean, the, the repetition in in the name and, and like you're, you're ramming it to people's brain cells right. so they have no choice. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Now... <laughs> Um, favorite song? On the EP. Um, it changes a lot and, like, depends on what kind of mood I'm in, but mm -hmm. I feel like... Okay, so wait, I got you. Okay, okay. When you're Laura, what's your favorite song? Good Things. When you're Moxie, what's your favorite song? Love Language. When you're Carbon, who's, what's your favorite song? Yin Yang or Stick Like Glue. And when you're low, Stick Like Glue wouldn't be for Lola? Lola would be Time. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, because they only get to see that when they're your boyfriend. Yeah, baby, take your time. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> now, how would you describe your style fashion-wise? Because um, me just being in the industry and me knowing a lot of people, like a lot of people know you that are in the industry that are like higher-ups as far as like Kanye. Like I know people who know of you or know mutuals of people who know of you like so right. where has that how would you describe your fashion style first and foremost 
Fashion style, um, I really like to mix, like, masculine and feminine things. Carbon, obviously, influences my fashion style, superhero shit, mm -hmm. tight shit, stuff that makes me feel, like, very strong. Like, one of, like, a brand that I really want to work with. Because you're dominant and you're controlling, right? A brand I really want to work with is called Under Armour, just because, like, when I wear it, I feel, like, strong. You wear Under Armour? I like that brand. <laughs> I legit. Are you like talking about the brand. Under Armour that sports players I'm literally talking with? about. I steal my brother's Under Armour. I just like the way it feels. It's like tight on you, and so you just feel like stronger. I don't know how to explain it. I will literally wear Under Armour under something. Oh, wow. <laughs> I also wear a lot of layers. Why? I don't know. Something about it makes me feel more like snatched or something. So has the is that anything to do with the dominance? The, <laughs> like I the... even have like layers under here. Like I just I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So you you have more. I it's not cold under. outside. It's like 70 degrees. It might be. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't it's, bother you? No, it's it's something I always do. Isn't that strange? So if it's if it's 90 degrees outside, I'm you still gonna have more layers. layers. Yeah. So how like, many layers? I don't know. Two to three. <laughs> what? Yeah. And that's just something that you've always done. Not always, like five, six years. Why, though? I don't know. It makes me feel, like, more put together or something. I don't know how to explain it. Wow. <laughs> now, is there a person, mm -hmm. a single person, that you look at for creativity when it comes to your style? To my style? I look to like brands and designers. Um, I'm 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 very like my mentor. He always says you're a trendy girl. I like trends. Like I like what's on trend usually. I I do. Um, and I like to like expand on that. Um, so yeah, I mean I I look at like all different designers probably. Yeah. I always love Rihanna style, but yeah. I I don't like mimic it. Like I, yeah, I really yeah, have yeah. like my own. Now is there a song by another artist you wish you would have wrote? I ask everybody that question too also. Yeah, um and why? There's some like gorgeous songs. Uh there's some Rosalia songs that I like. I like it's like I, when I hear a song and I want it to be my own like, cuz I want to perform it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um Well, well pause right there cuz yeah. you said Aaliyah. Now, yeah. in your single Not the One, mm -hmm. uh you pay homage to her. Yeah. Uh What did she mean? Mm -hmm. And what does she still mean to the industry and to the culture of music, of someone being an artist in general? So she was so ahead of her time. Like, I, what I connected with with her the most, like growing up, was like I was always like to like be a tomboy. Like I had a younger brother; he was like famous in our town. Everyone knew my brother. Mm -hmm. Like so, I was always like PJ's sister. Like, no one knew my name. I was PJ's sister. And so I was, like, around guys a lot. I liked being a tomboy, but I'm naturally so feminine that I couldn't escape it. And that was something that I loved about Aaliyah because she could be a tomboy, but she had this femininity that was, like, still so delicate about mm -hmm. her. And so I saw myself in her, and I was just like, oh, she's cool, and she could be a tomboy too and wear baggy clothes, but she's still feminine. And that was, like, how I, like, connected to her. Um and then just, like, her makeup looks and, like, her sets were all, like, futuristic. Like, they could come out now and it would be mm -hmm. crazy. And so I think just think she was, like, ahead of her time, like, sent here from another planet. To like, like Carmen. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? Right before she passed away, she started doing animation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't find out till later. My friend was like, do you know that she was doing that, like, right before? But I think, like, her song, More Than a Woman, like, I, I would love to perform that. Like, now... If you were not an artist, mm -hmm. what would your occupation be? I would be, like, a school teacher. What? Yeah. If I, like, wasn't an artist, that means, Would you like, still wear layers? Would you wear the glasses? No, I would probably... You know, the the layers you should are protection. Do, you should do a look. I just realized what the layers are. I just realized... It's protection? It's protection. And as a school teacher, I don't need that. I would be, like, more... So what is... Layers are protection from yeah. what? They they make me feel like I don't know because I my whole life is like to like be in front of cameras or be in front of people or be judged and be open to do that like mm -hmm. yeah sure here I am I'm exposed mm -hmm. and so I think the layers like 
keep something like tight on me. I don't know. But as a teacher, I wouldn't need that. I'd probably wear like sundresses every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so backward. <laughs> now, we're going to play a game. Uh-huh. Okay? The game is called This or That. Okay. And you have to answer mm-hmm. to every single question. Mm-hmm. I need an answer. Okay. Okay. Sweet or spicy? Sweet. Would you rather be with someone who is attractive or someone who is funny? Funny. So someone could be funny and you're not attracted to them? I would be attracted to them because they were funny. So looks doesn't play a... Not even. Okay. okay. Not even. So you ever seen Fat Albert? Um, yeah. Okay. You know who Mushmouth is? No. Okay, one second. One second. <laughs> we going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> we going to get to the bottom of this. I'm literally not attracted to like perfectly good looking man no that's cool i'm I'm not i'm not asking that i i, I just i i just where's it at i gotta let me find a good picture <laughs> let's find a good picture are you giving them some singing why are you singing so low okay so here's mush mouth from fat albert So if he was funny, what do you want me to tell you? I'm he just should asking, get it. If 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 he was funny, if he if he was sweet enough, attentive enough, you would give him the time of day. I don't know. Oh, so so they, so it does matter. I don't know. Oh, now you don't know. I don't know. Okay, cool. I'll let you slide with that one. <laughs> Money or love? Like romantic love. Money or love. Romantic love or some family love. Love in general. Love. Reality shows or sitcoms? Reality shows. Would you ever be on a reality show? Mm, I don't think so. You look like you'll be on, like, Real Housewives of L.A. (laughs) (laughs) No. East Coast or West Coast? East Coast. Huh? East Coast. Okay. Now, is that because you're from? New York. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in Atlanta. A New Jersey, but I moved to New York when I was 13. 13, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical attraction or personality? Personality. Loyalty or respect? Respect. Front or back? What? Front or back? <laughs> Front. Now, you got to start thinking about your Lola side, okay? <laughs> I was thinking about it. <laughs> so, face me. Oh, face you. Okay, <laughs> cool. Blind or deaf? Blind. FaceTime or... You said blind? Because then I could still hear music. Hmm. FaceTime or text? FaceTime. Cash or credit? Credit. Painful truth or confident lie? Painful truth. Go back to meet you go back to the past and meet your loved ones who passed away, or go to the future to meet your children or grandchildren to be? Past. Meet my ancestors. What's your love language? Is it even one of these words of affirmation or physical touch? It's those. But if you had to choose one. That's crazy how I got that also. It's those. Um, words of affirmation. Hmm. Uh, it used to be. See, I don't know. I haven't been in a relationship in a minute. so Because you're so to, dominant I, I used and to need, I used to need words. I used to need words. I but you haven't been in a relationship <laughs> because you're so dominant That's and controlling. That's not why. And you don't know how to allow a man to leave. That's true at all i'm just saying my ex didn't my ex wasn't like that he was not like but your ex made you insecure so he technically wasn't leading if he was leading you wouldn't be insecure facts i'm just saying collab with beyonce or adele beyonce Hmm. now if you could describe lore in three words what would those words be determined uh loyal and kind. If you could describe Moxie in three words, what would those three words be? Determined. No, it can't be the same thing. Um, caring. Okay. Um, powerful. Controlling. <laughs> and <laughs> she just flipped a bird at me. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Dominant. Uh, 
No. Uh, Indecisive? Creative. Okay, now if you could describe carbon. Um, powerful. That you can't say powerful again. Oh, confident. Okay. Um, in touch with, in a God flow, and massive amounts of faith. Now, if you could describe Lola Bunny, that is the name we're going with, okay? No, we're gonna re- we're gonna no. oh, we're gonna revisit this name. Like, Lola, if you could I'm describe come back Lola, next time and be like it's not Lola anymore, but we got her. What would those three words be? Um, free, sexy, mm, evo- like uh, evo- evocative, I guess. Hmm. Now I want you to look into this camera right here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Look, look into the camera. Oh. Give him a Lola look. <laughs> no, I'm not. You have to give him a Lola no. look. Lola, you need to like buy tickets for, or take me out to dinner for, <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know, you know. But you showed the whole Instagram world. I was my choice, my time. Okay, so look in the camera. Uh huh. Why you look at me? Because I'm gonna hear what you have to say first before I <laughs> no. agree. Look in the camera, <laughs> and from Laura. To Moxie, uh-huh. to Carbon, uh-huh. to Lola, <laughs> tell the people why they should be in tune with you as an artist, with you as a person, with you as an individual, and what's special about you and your music. I would say um, I really do it for the people. I really do. Like, I, I, I said that. Like, sometimes I don't even feel like I do it for myself anymore. Like, this industry has tumbled me. I bow on my face so many times, like, just flat, like, fall. And I get up because I think about, like, those girls I was on tour that I saw, my niece, my cousin. Like, I really think about, like, sharing these this music with people, sharing these experiences and, like, creating cool things for them, you know? People, like, go to concerts. They say it's, like, one of the best times of their lives that they've had. And it's, like... If I have the like capabilities and like blessings to like create stuff stuff like that, like I am doing it for them. Now, why should people go get twenty nine eighty nine? I think they'll enjoy it. There's like a variety of songs on it. It's like maybe something for everyone. It's a lot of different stuff. Um, I think for women, it will make you feel empowered. That was my intention. Controlling. It will make you feel empowered. See, I don't think you like powerful. You think, you think he likes powerful women? That's my best friend. She knows everything about me. <laughs> you got it. Follow where? To a see, restaurant? See. Like where are we going to eat? Or like what? <laughs> like how we're spending our money? Nah, nah. So then nah. what? Give me an example. Okay, so Tangible. so 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 a guy leading and, and, and to speak on the following aspect, it could just mean as far as in in an emotional way. In 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 a I'm way I'm gonna let you fo- lead my emotions. No, 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 no. Meaning with, with some terms that, that you might understand. Set the tempo, set the pace. Allow me to be the male and be dominant, but also being dominant as a male consists of listening to your lady. It consists of allowing your lady to lead in other ways. So it's a 50-50 thing, but when a female comes off as as controlling or... Controlling what? Uh, Well, in an instance of, because we're based on this off of this conversation... You were like you were like thirteen, and you were telling everybody what to do, when to do it, how to do it, when it was supposed to be fun. That's a trait of of a leader. Not necessarily. Absolutely, it, I was the leader of the group. But they didn't want to do it. They wanted to do it as fun. They wanted no. They didn't want it. They That's wanted, what you they, said. They wanted to chill after school. I'm like we have we have purpose. But they wanted to chill. <laughs> yeah, so they weren't in the group anymore. And how old were they? Thirteen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What is everybody doing as a 13 year What do you think Michael Jackson and Beyonce were doing at 13? Nah, they weren't, they weren't controlling other people to... Not controlling. I'm saying, like, if they wanted to be in the group, that's what it... It wasn't like... It wasn't like you have to you be in the group. You said you were the mama. I was the mama in the house. Yeah, I like that. See, so every... every See? 
controlling eight dudes, right? I like to be a CEO. No, that's cool. That's not an issue at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> I like to be a CEO. <laughs> what? What? Is, is it, is it no, come in the camera. Come in the camera. <laughs> come, come in the camera. It don't matter which one. There's a way to still be a boss, mm -hmm. but still be submissive at the same time. Know when is when the time is to be the leader and to let someone else take. Yeah, it would just depend on the guy and like what you're agreed, talking about. Agreed. I need a situation. I mean, but it's, it's it's not situational. Like I like to serve, so when I have a dude, like I'm gonna pay attention to what he likes. You like this kind of food? I'm gonna make sure you have that. You like like you come home at this time? I'm gonna make sure like. The house is like the doors open. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna take care. Like I like to, I like to nurture. I feel like women like to nurture, but I don't ever think of it like he's leading. I lead my life. No, he leads but, his life. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. Uh, a guy leading has nothing to do with leading your life. Okay, so what does it have to do with? It's the leading overall the relationship. relationship. Where it's gonna go? Not necessarily where it's gonna go, but it's like, how can I put this? Like, in what? Give me an example. It's it's you it is it's not really it's situational, but it's not like you have to be in those situations to to even give an example. I don't because I don't understand. Like, at least in my last relationship, we but, both had our own lives. See, so but much. That, that's the point. It's evident you've never had a man lead the way he should lead. Mm. Because if you had had one lead the way he should lead, you would understand. M must be. I mean, just so saying. that's not on me. No, it's not on you at all. Well, technically it is on you because you choose them. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, let everybody know where they go get 2980. I'm just so curious <laughs> for an example. But maybe, you know, maybe I'll see. Yeah, you'll see in due time. It's okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody where they can go get the EP from. You can, I mean, it's on all streaming platforms. Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal. Um, yeah, it came out a week and a half ago. Stream that. I hope you play the song. Just like that. Come on, I got this. Nothing moves in this city without me. You already know the vibes. It's Fly Guy DC. Deuces!